listen, before I forget, you'll see on the walls and on the shelf and things, different spring break and prom picture. If you take a picture of yourself on spring break with your free cow book, and you bring me the actual print, I will give you bonus points. Oh, great. Now, if several of you are going to the same place, you only need one book, you can all be in the same picture, and you'll all get points for it, okay? So I need, yep, that's a good one, take a look at it. All right, so you need, here's the thing about this though, kid. If you want the points, I have to be able to use your picture. If you email me a picture, that doesn't count. I am not printing these pictures. If you want the points, you print the picture and bring me the print. Also, as much as I love you, I do not want an eight by 10 of you. I want a snapshot that I can then make a collage out of. Okay, is that clear? Now, if there are 15 of you in the picture and you want to bring me a big one, that's okay. But I don't want you individually on the beach with your three cow book and eight by 10. I, I, I can't do that, okay? Everybody clear on that? And then the second thing is, this is a big deal. Green Lake is a big deal um, for a lot of you I know. We've been anticipating this for a long time and you're looking forward to it. And I want you to be happy and have fun. But I also want you to be safe. Because I have had particularly one student in the past who made a bad decision and is still handicapped because of that decision after all these years. So it is really important to me and to those of the rest of us here who love you that you make good choices. Okay? We want you to have fun, have a good time, but make good choices. You are loved, you are important, and I need to see you back when we back to Spring Break because we have math tomorrow and you need to be here and ready to do that. Okay? All right, amen, that's right. All right, speaking of math to learn, we, we are going to raise this thing to the fifth tower. Okay, I need your respectful attention, please. Divine. Respectful attention, please. Now, who took notes yesterday and remembers what step one is? What is step one? I, I, I didn't write it down. We have to change it into polar form. So step one is we're going to change this number into polar form. And I do that by drawing a picture because the picture will tell me R. What's my R? No, that side's root three, so R has to be bigger than that. Me too. What's root three squared? Three plus one, four, the square root of four is two. Now, look at those numbers, kids. How big is this angle right here? 60. How big then is theta? Do not say 60. Theta is 120. So this number is 2CIS 120. The radius is 2. CIS, the angle is 120. Now we're going to raise it to the fifth power. Who remembers how we do that? Well, we could write this out five times. I'm really not going to do that. But if I did, if I did, what would I do with all these twos? I have five of them. I wrote it all out. What would I do with all those twos? What does the rule say? I multiply them. So I got a two times a two times a two times a two times a two. What does that give me? 32. All right, now, if I wrote it all out, I have five of these 120s. What do I do with the angles? Remember, we multiply the R's, but we add the angles. So 120 plus 120 plus 120 plus 100 plus 120. 600. All right, so again, what's the rule? We learned this yesterday. 
When you multiply these numbers, and that's what we're doing here, five times. We're multiplying it five times. You multiply the R's and you add the angle. So I have two times two times two five times. And I have 120 plus 120 five times. So that's how I got the 32 and the 600. Now, see that guy? That should bother you. Right? What do we do when our angle is too big? We subtract 360, which would take us down to 240. <laughs> subtract another 360. You keep subtracting 360 until it gets down to the size it needs to be. Everybody okay with that? All right, now I'm going to let you use your calculator. Let's find X and Y. Now, how do we find X and Y? I'm letting you use your calculator on this. How do we find X and Y? X equals 32 cosine 240 and 32 sine 240. So what would my X and my Y be? What's X? Just plain negative 16? And then what is Y? And there is the answer. Now remember, remember, this is a CIS. It has an I in it, right? So when I write my answer, it has to have an I, and the I always goes with the Y. All right, everybody okay with that one? All right, let's try the next one. Same exact kind of problem, kids. So what's step one? What do I do first? Put it into polar form. And when I put it into polar form, I'm going to draw a picture of it. So I can do the Pythagorean theorem and find R. And I can figure out what my angle is. So this is going to look like this. Would everybody agree? Now, as soon as I make these two the same, I know that angle is going to be what? 45. Because the two sides are the same. And whenever the two sides are the same, you have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Now, do the Pythagorean theorem. Square that, what do you get? Two. Square that, what do you get? Two. Add them together, you get four, and the square root of four is two. Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So my number, watch it. Some of you might say this, and it will be wrong. It's, no, it's not 135. There is your number. Now, does everybody understand why it's 315? Yeah. You're in quadrant four. All the way around is 360, but we didn't quite make it all the way around, right? We only made it to here. So this is 360 minus 45. Now you're going to cube it. In other words, you're going to times it by itself three times. So what do you do with these guys? You multiply them. So it's two, two, two. So it's going to be eight. Now, what do you do with the 315? Add it three times. 945. Okay, this is what Julian was talking about a minute ago. That is way too big, right? So you go ahead and subtract 360, but you're going to have to subtract again because it's just too big. And what does it come down to? 225. 8CIS 225. So there is your polar form answer. Remember these directions said answer in polar form and then also answer in complex form. So now I'm going to let you get your calculator out. And if I'm looking for, uh, um, if, I'm, if I'm looking for complex form, what, am I, what do I have to figure out? X and Y. So how am I going to get an X and a Y out of this? 
x equals 8 cosine 225, y equals 8 sine 225. So I type those in on my calculator. Yeah, and that, and that's okay. So what do you get? Minus 5.7 i. And that's the way you write your answer. Remember the i goes with the y. The reason those two numbers are the same, Erica, is because this is a 45 degree triangle, so x and y are going to be the same. All right, we have one more. Is everybody keeping up with us here? All right, one more. Here we go. Remembers what step one is. You got to change it to polar form. And how do I do that? What do I do? I graph it. I draw a picture of it. So this one's going to look like this. Would everybody agree with that? Yep. Now pay attention here. See that root three right there? What does that tell you about this angle down here across from the? Okay, so this one's the 60, which means the one I want is a 30. No, because that's a two. Normally it would be one, one root three. Now it's two, two root three. It could be five, five root three. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, I need my radius, okay? So do your Pythagorean theorem. Let's see if we can all come up with it. And you can do that in your calculator. Just put that in parentheses and square it. Square it out and add them together. What'd you get for your radius? Julie, stop. Okay, I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Four. Four is the correct answer. Yeah, if it's a 30, 60, 90, don't you not have to... Uh, that if you remember the ratio, you should know it's double the short side. You're exactly right, Blake. What do you get when you square this, you guys? Square both pieces. What do you get? What do you get when you square two? What do you get when you square root three? Four times three is 12, so that's a 12. What's this when you square it? Four and 12 is 16, and the square root of 16 is four. So your number is four CIS what? What's your angle? Don't say 30. What's the angle? No, it's not 180. It's 210. Why is it 210? Because it's 180 and 30 more. And that is what you are raising to the sixth power. Okay, so how do we do that? Multiply four times four times four times four, six times. Okay, so do that. I don't even know what that is. 4096 maybe? Yeah. <laughs> 4096. Now, where did that number come from? <laughs> we multiplied four times four times four six times. Now, what are we going to do with this guy? Add him up six times, right? Which would be 1260. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Way, way, way too big. So, 4096. CIS, we need to shrink that guy down. Comes down to 180. And this is your polar form answer. Now, does everybody understand where the 4096 came from? Four times four times four, six times. Everybody understand where the 1260 came from? 
210 plus 210 plus 210 six times. You multiply the R's, you add the angles. That many times. Now I need my rectangular form or my complex form, so you can use your calculator. So X equals 4096 cosine 180. Y equals 4096 sine 180. Your answer should be negative 4096 plus zero I. Now, you do not actually have to include the zero I on there. I usually do, but you do not have to. Everybody okay with that? Alright, so that's it. You've learned everything, so now I have a little few practice problems for you to do.